Hello everyone, everyone. You saw I've been getting a, a lot of questions regarding the reconstitution of liposomal amphotericin B. Welcome to my channel. So you see, um, so amphotericin B, you know, is coming different um, types of that are variable. Uh, we are, mo I know most of us were used to the conventional one, which is of course deoscalate, which is amphotericin B deoscalate. So the conventional one is of course the one which is uh, characterized with a uh, much more side effects profile uh, that of course most largely which we are concerned of is uh, what we call renal okay renal dis can, is like to cause renal dysfunction and of course also can cause other things like of course electrolytes um, um, irregularities that's with regard to the conventional ones okay because it lacks specificity okay uh, when it comes to these uh, liquid lipid formulations of opportunity to be on the other hand these are amazing drugs uh, when they're done is that the drug itself, the amphotericin B active ingredient, is basically embedded inside a lipid carrier molecule. For in case, in the case of liposomal, the amphotericin B itself is embedded in the uh, what we call the rosettes or mesals. So this drug does not get released until it comes into contact with the egostro, which is of the fungal cell membrane. So when it comes into contact with that ego, so that's why the drug, of course, gets to be activated. And that's the reason why it's less likely to cause renal dysfunction, okay, because of its has a higher selectivity to receptor to the fungal itself. All right, that means that it's going to cause less, uh, it's going to high uh, risk of causing renal dysfunction, which is AKIs, acute kidney injuries. And also, apart from that also, it's actually less to cause electrolysis, uh, disregularities as well. So that's the advantage of this thing. But now, the other thing that you need to know is that, despite, of course, this selectivity and modification, the lipid formulations, of course, still have got the same uh, propensity of causing infusion rated side effects as the conventional one. In fact, some of what cause, some of the lipid formulations cause more uh, infusion rated side effects than actual conventional one. For example, operation B, uh, uh, what you call the lipid complex dispensation. That lipid complex one is causes uh, more than. So usually it's greater than A, B, C, um, A, B, C, D, right? Operation B, colloidal dispensation. This guy here causes more side effects, uh, which are the infusion rated side effects than the conventional uh, deoxycholate that we know, right? So despite, but it is a lipid formulation, right? So today I'm going to talk about how you reconstitute uh, what we call the colloidal, of co I want the amphotericin B liposomal, the liposomal amphotericin B. This sometimes comes in the brand like USA called Ambisome, right? It's a very good drug, of course, generally. And of course, uh, I want to highlight that the lipid formulations one, uh, this one, of course, they are less potent compared to deoxycholate. So these ones, of course, are less potent, right? So let's go on that. Now, what you need to know that amphotericin B is used for a number of, of course, this is a very broad and fungal drug. These are coming from the class called polyins, and um, very broad. It covers a multiple, of course, uh, fungal species, of course, including, of course, the yeast, that is the yeast themselves. They are able to cover other species like the morphic fungi. Of course, also candida, uh, our, our species are also covered by the amphotericin B. Now, the use of course dosages for liposomal amphotericin B varies depending on what you are using it for. If you are using just for other just empirical therapy for fungal infections, you may dose it at the three milligrams per kg by the word. If you are using it for um, what you call severe systemic fungal infections, you may use dosage of course uh, three to five milligrams per body word, right? Per kg per kg body word, right? If you are using it for CNS cryptococcus, right, or what you call cryptococcal meningitis, the dose of course usually is going to be dosed at six milligrams, right? Six milligrams uh, per kg per day, right? So that's the daily, of course, even once a day because this drug has got longer half life. Okay, so what you need to understand here is that let's assume that. Um, uh, I'm going to get my calculator. So let's assume that we have a patient, right? I have a patient um, who is actually weighing, uh, let's assume that's 70 kgs. That's average weight for most of the people, right? Normal one. All right. So this patient, of course, is to receive a amphotericin B, uh, reposomal one, for cryptococcal meningitis treatment. So what are we going to do now? We need to calculate the dose for the patient. So we can multiply, of course, our 6 milligrams here. All right. This is per kg 
uh, right, and per J, of course, multiplied by the weight of the patient, which is, of course, this case is sovereignty kg. So, you know, kgs and kgs, of course, will cancel each other. And what I'm left with, of course, just the milligrams, which is the dose. And, of course, the dose must be, it's a quantity, it's a mass, so it must be either in grams, milligrams, you know, all, all that. So, that's basically that. So, we're going to multiply our 6 by 70, and we get, of course, 400 and 20 so this is going to be 420 so 420 uh, milligram of course is the dose that which is od of course iv infusion all right this is going to give us the infusion so usually of course um this is the dose of the patient so how do you reconstitute this medication very importantly what you need to understand now with regard to this i'm going to call the next part is that um uh you need to calculate of course uh you need to know what is the recommended final concentration of the drug and this is very cardinal because if you over dilute the drug you might of course have a little drug um of course um you, can, you might lose the effectiveness of the drug especially of course when it comes to cns right the concentration is also very vital to know what would be the final concentration and this applies also if you also under dilute the drug you are might also cause what we call to, that toxicity might be enhanced and increased through contact with the cells. So that's why it's very important to know what is the recommended uh, final concentration, right? So for the riposomal amphotericin B, the final reconstitutional uh, concentration must be, of course, in the range of 1 to 2 milligram uh, okay, per meal. So that is a con final concentration that you are aiming at. So I'm going to get rid of, of course, since we know the dose already is 140 there, so I'm going to just keep a bit, um, this out, so I maintain the center for easy understanding. So let's get this, so the dose to discuss for our patient is 420, right, milligrams. So let's do that. So if I reach here now, next part, of course, that we know our final reconstitutional concentration for the liposomal one must be, of course, 1 to 2 milligrams per meal. So this means that, we don't know so. So how do you come up with the total volume of the fluid that you need to use for this type of administration? So total volume, I use the word of course Q as my formula in an easy way. Quantity, okay, in mils of water, because of course that's milligram per meal there. So quantity in mils, the quantity, the volume of fluids as a total volume to use to reconstitute this drug for the patient is equal to the dose of the patient. So the dose of the patient, of course, there, divided by what we call the concentration. This is called what we call the constitutional concentration, which is what? 1 to 2 milligrams. So what you usually do there, I get the average. So you can just add 1 plus 2, you're getting a, a 3, divided by 2. This is an average of 2 uh, summation, of course, of two parts. Then you get 1.5. So I'm going to get 1.5 here, uh, which, of course, is 1.5 milligrams. The meal. So I'm going to replace, of course, my dose there. We already know the dose of a patient. The dose of a patient there is what? Is 420 milligrams. That's the dose of our patient. And of course, this is what? Milligram per meal. So milligram, milligram, of course, will cancel each other. And what we're left with, of course, is the volume, which is in meals there, right? Quantity now. And then, of course, when we divide this, so I'm just going to do 420 divided by 1.5, and that's going to give me 280 meals. So that's going to give how many? 280 meals as the final volume there now for this for example amphotericin b liposoma usually comes in 50 milligrams so the vowel usually comes what in 50 uh meal, uh, sorry, 50 milligrams vowel and this of course is lyophilized form so easy all right so what you need to do basically is that you may of course depending on uh how big the vowel is some vowel may accommodate even 10 meals some may get of course accommodate 20 meals of course so what you do initially step is that you get your 10 mils of water for injection. The first one for easily diluting the drug, okay? Or you can get 20 mils, depending on how big the vowel is. You add, of course, there, uniformly divide, uh, uniformly, of course, dissolve the drug, which comes, of course, in the powder form. And, of course, you mix with uh, water for injection, right? You're going to add there 10 mils or 20 mils. So don't forget the volume that you've used there, of course. If I've used 20 mils, the final volume that I need to remember that I need I need what you call 280. So mean that I will use if I use 10 mils there to to dilute the drug. If I use if I use 10 mils of normal or what you call water for injection, I will use 270 mils of dextrose to make up the final volume of 280. If I use 20 mils 
of water for injection to dilute of course the initial or rather in initial dilution of the drug i'm gonna knock off 20 mils from the total volume which is of course 280 mils so it's gonna be 260 let's assume we've used 20 mils to dilute the drug the 50 milligram valve that means that of course there now you further dilute up so after mixing the drug with a 20 mils of water for injection you get that drug that is 20 mils of the drug and the add of course to extra 260 mils to make a total volume of 280 mils that's how you reconstruct then that, that of course may run over one to two hours administration that's okay depending of course on the patient of course is quite very sick and of high risk of possible reactions you might of course prolong the duration of course of drug administration but for liposomal one to two hours is quite very much okay safe for the patient Okay, that is of course as a constant infusion. So you can calculate, of course, the number of droplets if you know that I'm having 280 mils, right? How much, of course, of drop factor use? So that depends, of course, on what what giving set you have on the ward. Some giving sets are labeled as one mil is equal to 20 drops. Some, of course, are labeled as one mil is equal to 15 drops. So depending on the giving set, you can calculate, of course, the number of drops that you must run for you to give the drug to you over that period, of course, of time very well. So this is how you reconstitute the drug itself. This is how you reconstitute amputation B liposomal one. Thank you for watching my channel. So please tune in for more videos like this. Like my page and share please. Thank you very much.